Hey folks, I'm Pastor Joseph from Culpeper Presbyterian Church. Welcome back to our Lenten devotional series on wisdom. Last week we began our exploration of the book of Job, focusing on the hymn to wisdom in chapter 28. Continuing in Job with some excerpts from both Job 38 and Job 42, we're still only beginning to unpack everything within this work of wisdom literature. And although this section of our study is entitled Wisdom's Answer, I'm certain that questions will rise up as the result of this study, and I want you to encourage you all to share any questions you may have, both with your small group and with me. You can also leave a comment on our YouTube channel if you're not currently attached to a Bible study group. Our passages for today are Job 38, 1 through 15, and Job 42, 1 through 6. I invite you to pause the video to read them together with your group. And although I recommend the Common English Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, and the Tanakh translations for this project, you're certainly welcome to use any translation you like. Comparing different translations is a great way to gain greater insight into Scripture. Once you've read that passage together, take some time while the music plays to meditate on that passage and to doodle or make notes as you respond to the questions in your devotional booklet. This is our first time covering two passages in the same session. I think, however, that the Lord's response from the whirlwind and Job's response in humility are inseparably linked. 
That's part of why I think, at least for now, that I would be unlikely to do a full sermon series on the book of Job. There's so much within this book that is interrelated. And it seems to me that it would be nearly impossible to break it up into pieces that could stand on their own. The book of Job starts with a contest between God and the adversary that uses the suffering of a righteous man as a pawn in their cosmic game. And then the anguish dialogues take the conventional wisdom of the time and show, has, and show how it is insufficient for the actual experience of suffering. And then there's a hymn to wisdom in chapter 28, which we covered last time, and we reach our stories for today, wherein God answers from the whirlwind and Job gives his closing argument. Job's complaints are legitimate. He is a righteous man who is suffering for reasons that he cannot begin to understand. The demands he makes and the questions he asks are so faithful that they are recorded in Scripture. I won't speak for y'all, but I empathize with Job. Well, maybe not the righteous part, but certainly the having questions of God for my suffering part. I want Job's questions to have definitive answers, for there to be a solution to these problems, and for everything to make sense. And so when we get to chapter 38, and the Lord speaks for the first time in an agonizingly long time, I am listening closely. We get a voice from the whirlwind, and we get answers, but they're not the answers to the questions Job asked out loud in his conversations with his friends. Job has asked why God broke the rules about good things happening to good people like him. Job has asked why God has treated him unjustly. And now the voice from the whirlwind speaks. And it says that Job's system of order and rules was never God's be to begin with. It was a human scheme of justice projected from earth onto heaven. Job and his friends have applied their human understanding of justice onto God and expected God to play by their rules. And so God takes Job on a whirlwind tour throughout the cosmos asking questions that, from my perspective, are intentionally ambiguous. Based on the way that we read them, these questions could be scolding, they could be playful, they could be strictly rhetorical, and they could be reminding Job of his place in the universe. They could also be inviting Job to be in a special relationship with God as they watch creation together, or they could be something else entirely. There is no definitive answer. There are only the variety of answers that are supported by the text. And perhaps that is wisdom's answer, that we are called by God to continue pursuing questions, to never be satisfied with a single answer that we can then project onto God, because any solution we come up with would reduce God into something less than the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all things. Having encountered the Lord face to face, Job gives his closing argument. He answers God's questions by confessing that he spoke out of a limited experience. But now that an encounter with God has expanded his experience, he rests his case on dust and ashes. The last verse in uh, this section we've read together has proven to be extremely difficult to translate and therefore interpret. While the King James Version gives it as abhor, the Common English Bible uses relent. The New Revised Standard Version translates it as despise, and the Tanakh says recant. Each of those words lends a very different meaning to the passage. Following the example of the rest of the book, I'm not going to solve that problem. Because this part of the book of Job is a poem. And it's likely that multiple meanings are not only possible, but intended. Job's answer is broader than language can capture, just as wisdom is greater than humans can measure. 
Both the book of Job and the book of Ecclesiastes challenge the assumptions made by other parts of scripture and even other parts of wisdom literature. The book of Job shows God destroying human estimations of the good, the holy, and the saved, and the overthrow of doctrines and ideologies which prevent human life in communion with God. These ideologies are wisdom gone wrong, assuming that we know everything there is to know. Wisdom is an ongoing pursuit of God by prayerfully reflecting on human experience and on creation. Job's experience of God's response from the whirlwind and his willingness to change his understanding and stance as a result of it models the pursuit of wisdom. Job, the character, begins his story with a moralistic understanding of God. Job is righteous, so good things have happened to him. And then Job experiences undue suffering. So he shifts his understanding of God to accommodate his experience. Then he experiences the Lord's response from the whirlwind and again remains open to the new experience and changes his understanding of what it means to be a human in relationship to God. Even though the questions he raised elsewhere in the book were never technically answered. I said last week that the dust should never settle on our relationship with God, and I wonder if Job's journey shows that continual pursuit of wis as wisdom's answer, rather than his friends who assume they have all the answers already. I'm going to turn things over to your small group leader again so that y'all can continue this conversation among yourselves. Remember that I'm eager to hear any questions y'all have. So either reach out to me or leave a comment here on this video so that the conversation can continue even after this video ends. Next week will be the final video in this series. But I hope that the process of pursuing wisdom does not end with the production schedule, but continues to challenge all of us as we experience new things that God is doing in creation and in our lives.